Hey guys, Jonathan. I've got a, another video here for you. I've got a 2015, early 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina display. And recently I noticed that my keyboard and my trackpad would stop working intermittently. Um, it would always turn back on after a while, but pretty soon it just stopped working altogether. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I remove this cover from the keypad and I'm trying to text or type nothing happens even the mouse pad nothing works as you can see it's not moving so this is not a uh, problem that uh, with the keyboard sticking like you know Apple is dealing with right now this is something completely different. So I took it actually to the Apple store. Um, they were familiar with it. The good news is that, that this fix is an in-store fix. Um, so you don't have to wait the normal seven to 10 days for Apple to send it out, have it fixed and return back to you. The bad news is, is that it actually costs about $80 or $79 to do this repair. Um, and it's pretty much $10 part and the rest of it is just labor. So I asked the guy at Apple, can't I just do it myself? He said, yes. And so this is a video of me replacing it so you guys can follow along if you've also had this problem. Um, it's a pretty simple fix. Let's look at the tools that I got. So here we have the tools. The problem that is going on is that apparently there is a flex cable that connects the um, trackpad to the keyboard. Um, and when it gets, you know, once you use it, apparently it rubs together and can become deteriorated and it stops working. Um, if you actually use the uh, USB port on the side to plug in a mouse, and then another USB port to plug in an external keyboard, you can actually use the computer like normal. Um, but of course you'd have to have like an Apple uh, keyboard because the shortcut keys would not, are not the same with Apple and Mac. So I'm sorry, with Apple and PC. So it still works. So I know it's a hardware problem. So this is what I've got. Um, I got these off of Amazon, I think total it cost me maybe about $20, $23 or so. Um, this is the flex cable that we're gonna be installing. Um, the guy at Apple said, and actually it's true, is that a lot of times this flex cable is shipped with the tools that you need. However, I bought the tools separately also on Amazon because I didn't want to compromise. Um, maybe, you know, them give me a quality, um, flex cable with inferior tools just to keep the cost low. So I bought them separately to try to, in my opinion, get the best quality products as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the 10 little screws that go along the uh, back of the laptop. All right, now that we've got the back of the computer open, um, the first thing I wanna do for safety is to remove the battery connection. So the battery is actually found right here. This is gonna be a little adhesive part that just folds right back and you can just pull it Ugh, right there. I'll just leave that to the side. And this is where the connection is. Um, you can actually just take this and just pry that off, um, safely disconnect it. Now that the battery's removed, we can safely begin working on replacing the flex cable. This is the flex cable right here, by the way. Um, it runs from here and then it connects into here. Um, to get access to it, the first thing we need to do is to remove it from these screws here. So once that metal shield is unscrewed, it actually pops right off. I'll show you here. With the shield removed, we can now remove the top part of a flex cable. This is actually connected to the circuit board. 
as opposed to being stuck on or anything like that. It's actually stuck. So you're gonna have to take your um, precision tool and maybe just get under there a little bit, wedge it under and pull it straight up. There's adhesive on the back of it. So slowly pull it back to here and you'll stop right here because this is also connected to the circuit board and you don't wanna rip that out and um, cause any damage. This is what it looks like after I've removed it. One thing you guys wanna keep in mind that once you have the flex cable removed to this point, you cannot just pull this up because it's actually um, connected it's inserted under this bridge. So it doesn't come straight up. It has to go back. You have to push it back towards the battery to slide it out because it slides up underneath this little metal bridge. Okay, so we're ready to install the new flex cable. But something I wanted to show you guys. Um, the one on top is the old one. The one on the bottom is the new. Those blue tabs, that's where the adhesive is. So don't worry about that. Um, but this is something you see how this cable has this, um, kink in it or this zigzag. And that is so that it can lay around the battery, like right here, right? It would go down and zigzag and under there. Same thing would do on this side too, down zigzag and connect there. The new one doesn't have this kink in it. Now I've seen some people bend it so that it fits. Um, but I'm gonna try to do it without bending it just to see what happens um, because my worst case scenario is that I actually break it um, trying to get it to fit when it probably already fits anyway. So um, let's see what happens. All right guys, so I've got the flex cable in place. It was actually really easy to slide it back into here. Um, I didn't have to kink it. However, I did find it, I don't know, if maybe if this is just um, the one that I have, maybe there's some irregularities or inconsistencies with the length. I think it's a little too long. As you can see here, I've got this bulge here after I stuck it down with the adhesive layer. Um, and I did try to maybe stick this down behind the battery to, you know, you know so it wouldn't have so much slack. Um, but it just, it's not enough space back there to get um, the flex cable in between the board and the uh, battery. So this is the best I could do once the cover's on. Hopefully that will, um, that'll lower that in a safe way. Um, the next thing we have to do right now is put this shield back on and um, reconnect the battery. I think we're pretty much done. Okay, so I've got the screws back in for the shield. Here's a quick tip. Um, make sure your precision tools have a magnetic tip because these are super, super tiny and they could easily fall anywhere in, between, in this computer and you never see it again. And here's the connection for the battery again. And I'm going to just put the cover back over it. Hey guys, I just want to let you know, while I was putting the cover back on, I did realize that I could put the rest of the flex cable down into here. So now we have a beautiful flush um, layer here. So time to put the cover on and we'll be all done. I'm going to start it up and show you guys if it works. All right, guys, so moment of truth here. Let's see if this works. Got power. Please work. Yay! Oh, thank God. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped you. See you in the next one. Bye.